first. Uh, type of membership is what we call a national membership, and this type is aimed towards already existing national networks that want to collaborate with other networks and groups on an international stage. And in the future, when more climate student groups exist, um, networks of those groups can uh, come together and create national networks, uh, such as the one in Sweden, for instance. And, and our next slide here, we will be speaking, we will mention the uh, a second type of membership, which is a, the local membership. And this type is aimed towards already existing local groups at specific university or, or colleges that want to join up a lar our larger movement. And if there are no uh, such groups whatsoever, we will then help you in starting up those uh, using um, the climate students uh, name and framework if that is uh, what you want to do. And, and of course, then you will become a member of the organization. And then we have our next slide here. Then so why join up? Well, the climate crisis is a pressing global issue that requires an international approach in tackling it. And we have no time to lose. And instead of working in our own smaller bubbles, we should connect and collaborate as much as possible. The more positive momentum we can get among universities, the larger our impact will be as university leadership follows trends, looking at each other on ways to stay relevant and up to date. And we should be there to influence their climate policies to be in line with the latest climate change research. And through the CSM, we will be able to mobilize more voices via a larger joint platform that can have a larger effect. Furthermore, we will be able to learn from each other as we raise our capabilities when it comes to things as campaigning, lobbying, and awareness raising, such as uh, we just did basically in the, in the workshops. There. So it's a small taste of what to come, I would assume. And importantly, we will be able to, we will be able to share resources such as the latest research, hard hitting arguments and organizational tools. Uh, something I'm looking forward to is being able to brainstorm new ideas together and uh, help each other find solutions to, to the problems we are facing. Of course, it's a great opportunity to create lasting bonds with other students all over the world, uh, get a sense of a global movement and learn about each other's situations. I think that knowing that we aren't alone in this fight uh, goes a long way uh, during those tough moments when it feels like uh, the odds are against us. On top of this, we will be able to join forces in creating campaigns and other collaborations, which we could uh, reach with all around the world, uh, bringing more people into our movement and raising even more awareness than we could alone. Now, Isha will speak about one exciting concrete example on uh, how we could uh, collaborate. Please uh, take it away, Isha. Hi everyone, I'm Isha from Singapore from the Climate Student Movement. Um, so one of the activities we'll be launching is a mentorship program for all our members. So all over the world, there are universities at varying different stages of setting up their own climate movement, some of which are already rather established, as you've seen some earlier, and some that have just started up. So in this journey, there are many like roadblocks and obstacles, and it is sometimes difficult to navigate the path successfully engage all the university administrations or to get them to listen or to take the first step. As such, we hope to link up established climate student groups with new climate student groups to provide assistance in the initial phases of starting up and running the organization. Application for being a mentor or mentee is open now and the sign up link and more information can be found in the link given there. Um, once you've signed up, we'll, we'll match you with a suitable mentor with a suitable mentee as soon as possible. If you have any more questions about this, feel free to stay behind later and ask our board directly, or you can drop us an email if you don't have the time to stay behind after. So um, now Adam will explain more about how you can join the, uh, join the international movement in different ways. Yes, thank you very much. So the climate students movement, the international movement is still in, in its infancy. We're still creating the structure and starting up the initial functions basically. So what we have right now is we have an international board uh, which uh, you've all been meeting here today uh, in different sessions and what we do uh, as a board member we're still looking for more board members uh, and what we do as board members is we 
plan the long-term operations and uh, finances once we come to that point we will also plan that for example arranging network meetings like this one or reaching out to new organizations to try to get them to join the movement and it's also a matter of communicating with our existing climate student groups and administrating a little bit of administration not a lot climate students is very low administration but it, it, it's always a little bit of that as well it's also about coordinating the committees that we will be building which i will talk a little bit about a bit later and of course supporting new members new startups to try to make sure that we can spread as much as we really want and make sure that anyone who wants to join the movement has the capability to do so and then of course uh, as any board we also represent the climate student movement in different uh, arenas so that's what we do in the board, but there are other ways of engaging in the climate students movement without joining the board necessarily. Um, you could be an auditor for the movement, and that's something that we need to have, so it's a very important position. Um, but it basically means that you can be an independent observer of the movement and make sure that the board does what it's supposed to, that it follows its statutes, that and that the auditor basically reviews the board's work every year and makes sure that everything has gone as it should and that the board hasn't done anything that goes against its statutes. And also once we have a finance, it will also be about reviewing the finance and make sure that it has gone to the right things. You could also join a committee and this is something that is uh, new for us and that we really want uh, to get started. Uh, and what this means basically is that, that you can be a more engaged member of the climate students movement without necessarily being in the board and then you can have a more specialized task so we have a few committees that we've already decided that we need uh, we're all of course open for more suggestions but this is what we're specifically looking for we're looking for an election committee that can after this coming annual meeting can start looking for people to join the board and to be auditors and join the committees and basically gather applications, make interviews with the applicants and then propose uh, new board members at the following annual meeting. We're also looking at a finance and sponsorships committee. We want to start up being able to gather sponsorships and financial partnerships. So that committee uh, as in this initial phase would basically be searching for new financial possibilities and reach out to potential sponsorship partners and start negotiating a little bit. And then we're looking for a media design technology committee, which will be doing basically the material for our network meetings and the events and campaigns, making some graphic materials, maybe some uh, um, texts as well, maintaining our website uh, with, of course, in connection with the board so that when the board wants something on the website this uh, committee can help make it happen and also this committee can suggest what we should put on the website and also doing some social media work so now that you know how you can join uh, the, the um, climate students movement what are the upcoming events for the movement so on november 13th we have an introduction meeting where we will be introducing all of our new members that we are hoping to get after this meeting and we'll basically help you with whatever you need help with so it will be a, a more laid back meeting than this one a significantly shorter meeting than this one but it will be a lot about yeah getting a connection and getting started really and then on the 28th of november we have our annual general meeting and that's where we will be electing another board member uh, which we want and also auditors election committee all of that uh, important stuff that you need to do and also if you, there's any statute changes or anything we can also do that then so write down these uh, these dates if you want to become a member and make sure to register as a member on our website so with that, uh, I think we're done with the program for today. Uh, we want to thank all of you, of course, for joining us. It's been really great to have all of you here. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a chat, a bit of a, a Q&A with the board uh, after this, but you're free to take a few minutes break. We know it's been intense.